You know, one of the great things about somebody like me, a radio talk show host, getting his own show is that I can cover issues that I want to with my own prism, my own bias. I'm going to tell you flat out, I'm not a journalist. I'm an average schmo just like you. But I think it's that honesty that makes this show compelling. And there is perhaps no more compelling segment than the next one. You are about to see how all of the hate and the propaganda and the lies are taught to the most impressionable among us, the children. It is as chilling as it is heartbreaking. And as you watch this next segment, ask yourself, how is it possible that a child this young, this innocent, could be filled with so much hate? What's your name? Fatmala. How old are you, Basmala? Three and a half. Are you a Muslim? Yes. Basmala, do you know the Jews? Yes. Do you like them? No. Why don't you like them? Because. Because they are what? They are apes and pigs. My first recollection go into kindergarten. Uh, I was six years old. All kids have to sing a song that was uh, called Al Arab Ahbabna wal Yahud Khlabna, which means Arabs are beloved and Jews are dogs. Yet never knew what a Jew was. By the time you got to high school, the songs got even more. Songs like Ya Gatilin Damkum Halali Alayna, O Jews, calling the Jews, O killers, your blood is halal to us, is kosher to us. By hiding propaganda in songs, children almost become immune to what they're actually saying. And when children hear the same propaganda in their songs as they do from their parents, it quickly becomes fact. Listen to this Kuwaiti sheik preaching to parents about what to teach their children. Oh mothers and fathers, you must train your children every night before they go to bed, to go on raids in order to liberate Jerusalem and Al-Aqsa. And when he goes to sleep, after reading the Quran and the bedside verses, he should recite together with you the prayer of martyrdom. Allah, I pray to you in all honesty to be martyred for your sake. Do this every night. Of course, aside from the parents, another effective way to reach kids directly is through television shows created for them. On Jerusalem Day, tens of thousands of people gather in Tehran to protest Israel and celebrate their hatred of the Jews. What day is today? Jerusalem Day. What did you come for? We came to do the death to America thing. So in essence, <clears throat> uh, we were learning that at some point in time when we kill the Jews after they gathered in Israel, and in that day of judgment that you're taught, that we can even rape the woman. We can even, to the extent of raping the Jewish woman. You know, sex was being used to manipulate the minds of teenagers. If sex is used to influence teenagers, then cartoons are meant to reach an even younger crowd. Call me the door. Hello, my The education in the Middle East of demonizing the Jews is such an epidemic that they show cartoons all throughout the Middle East and you have children watching this cartoon. Educating through hate, celebrating death, it's those memories that still haunt Walid Shubat. Even going to the zoo in Jerusalem as a teenager in school, school trip, uh, my uncle was a teacher in the school. He flicked a cigarette to the gorilla that was uh, in a cage. The gorilla had a habit of smoking. 
it picked up a nicotine habit. So here's the gorilla was smoking and we're asking a question. Well, we don't believe in the theory of, of evolution. How in the world did the gorilla learn how to smoke? And the answer came with a Quranic verse attached to it. These are the descendants of the Jews. Their ancestors broke the Sabbath. They were punished in accordance to the Quran where it says, وَقَلَبْنَاهُمْ قِرَدَةً خَاسِئِينَ The Sabbath breaker were converted to becoming detestable monkeys. Jews being demonized and demoralized to the point that they are vermin. Very similar to what happens in Nazi Germany. It's not so easy to hear or see this kind of hate passed on to the next generation. But if they're going to stop the cycle, the worst thing they can do is ignore it. Brigitte Gabriel, she uh, grew up in Lebanon, was uh, a victim. Uh, early on of radical Islam, she's now a U.S. citizen and author of a new best-selling book, Because They Hate. Um, Brigitte, we were just talking um, here during that package about um, the school books that are not just happening in the Middle East, but what is being taught now in radicalized American Muslim schools. It is shocking what's happening in schools all across the world, not only in America. The government of Saudi Arabia is printing books and, and establishing schools all around the world, over 25,000 schools established and funded by the Saudi government. And they are supplying the books to these schools. And some of these books that are taught in the Middle East, like we just watched, to mm -hmm. teach children to hate and become suicide bombers, are being taught also in the United States of America. And I'm going to quote you some of the sample of the books. This is a book uh, from... Uh, eighth grade and ninth grade books. This is called Sharh Kitab al Tawheed for eighth grade, published 2001. This is page 43. Jews and Christians cursed by Allah and turned into apes and pigs. Quoting Surah Al Ma'idah, verse 60, the lesson explains that Jews and Christians have sinned by accepting polytheism and therefore incurred Allah's wrath. To punish them, Allah had turned them into apes and pigs. It's unbelievable hatred education that is being taught to a elementary school children, right. secondary school children. How do we expect to teach a child such hatred against people like you and me and expect him to grow up at 18 year old and love us and respect There's us? There's also something in the books where it says that uh, until the Muslims, help me out here, until the Muslims fight the Jews and the Christians, the day of judgment cannot come, right? Exactly. Which, ex which explains the whole messianic kind of apocalyptic view of people like President Ahmadinejad in Iran. Exactly. And this is what the West needs to understand and realize about Islam. We are dealing with a radical ideology right now spreading all throughout the world with one goal, and that is the establishing of an Islamic Khalifa throughout the world. Okay, wait, and wait, wait, explain that because most people don't even know what that is. Um, a Khalifa is an Islamic government yeah. uh, ruled by Sharia law mm -hmm. um, where everybody has to obey uh, and live under Islam. In Islam, there is no difference between the state and the religion. The religion is the state and the state is the religion. Right. And this is why we are seeing suicide bombers right now who are spreading throughout the world, screaming Allahu Akbar as their last words, praising Allah as they die and go to heaven. But this is what they're taught from the time they were little, from the time they were children. So when you were, you were growing up, up in the Middle East, you were in Lebanon, um, and you spent from 12 to 17 in an underground bunker, right? Yes. What do you remember? Do you remember being taught any of this? Because you're not um, uh, Muslim. Do you remember being taught any of this, being exposed to this, being hearing the songs? Uh, or anything like that? I was not taught hatred at home, but as a Lebanese girl growing in Lebanon, uh, we had a lot of Palestinian refugees that came to Lebanon after the war. Mm -hmm. uh, Lebanon actually was the only country who took in a third wave of ref uh, Palestinian refugees in 1970. So our government, which controlled the media, what we used to watch on television at night was Israel, Azrael, uh, Azrael is the name of the devil, the Jews are evil, the Jews are barbaric, the only time we will have peace in the Middle East is when we kill all the Jews and throw them into the See, this was the propaganda being right. espoused all throughout the media. This show has been has taken me months to be able to put on the air. We have less than a minute. You've been in the media for a long time. Why is it why has it taken almost an act of God to get this show on the air? 
because political correctness is killing us. Political correctness is the disease that is killing the West. It is the apathy by which the Muslims are killing us one by one. We have got to throw it in the garbage where it belongs. People have to develop the backbone to stand up and identify the enemy because the West is right now is plagued with Islamofascism, a disease worse than cancer that is going to kill our body unless we fight it and kill it first. And unless people come to that understanding, and hopefully we don't have to suffer a nuclear attack on American soil, nor on British soil or any other westernized nation, but this is where we're heading. And the media is the first front in getting the message to the American public, and it is their duty to do that. Brigitte, thank you very much. Thank you. More in a minute.